Hey everybody, this is uh, Cedric from 3D Bandit and uh, today I'll be showing you how to make this awesome, cool, realistic uh, chrome look. So uh, as you can see, this is uh, a little bit dirty, a little bit old, and there's like very subtle dirt and scratches, and like the most awesome part about this is it is all procedural. So that makes really awesome. Procedural textures are the future. Uh, so yeah. And let's jump right into it, how I did this. Did this. Did do? Did do? Hmm. So we've got a basic uh, scene set up here. Uh, just a sphere uh, with an environment texture and like a basic glossy setup here. Um, so uh, how do we bring in these details? I have a moose grift texture here and you can see the settings here. Which brings in a lot of cool texture like it looks like dirt uh, and it's really cool um, the thing I see a lot when people make uh, try to make procedural textures is that they don't go enough with the detail or like if you put a less uh, less scenarity, whatever that may be uh, down here the problem with this is once you get this blurt um, like texture uh, once you get blurt edges the realism fades away. Uh, it applies to uh, very few objects, really, where you have these, uh, well, very few shaders or very few materials where you have these really shaded view. Um, everything in life is really, really detailed um, when you look around. So you want to have uh, a texture that actually brings in a lot of detail. Uh, so yeah, let's get rid of this one. And uh, yeah, I have a couple of things set up here, uh, like this color ramp, which will help me to uh, to uh, yeah bring in some of these details down to make it even more subtle, and bring this in the roughness. Also, this is very dark, so the roughness stays um, close to zero to make it shiny. Now we get this. And this looks already very cool so we get this like greasy um, texture really uh, which like implies use uh, implies uh, it being somewhere where there is dust somewhere where there is dirt that this is not like a shiny new object that just came out of the factory so it looks really cool uh, the second thing uh, I want to use the same texture to bring in a little bit of color so the white is going to apply to the darker spots uh, which is actually the spots that have the least roughness and it's a little bit blue it's it's like nah, not very saturated but it's uh, also the value is set to one very important to bring in these uh, to make the chrome itself a little bit bluish and the grease and stuff is a little bit on the other side also, it has a saturation of 0 0.030 to give it a little bit of color contrast. Um, and if you plug this in here, we can already see its effects. Like, it looks already really cool. Super awesome. Uh, and the third thing I want to add is with the same texture, bring in the, in the height in the bump note, and bring it in a normal of the glossy. And if you put this too strong, you're going to get something really weird. Uh, or just really, this looks too much like... Uh, it looks also cool if you're looking for this um, this kind of material. Uh, always know which material, material you're looking for. Um, and then try to achieve that uh, with like reference and yeah, just play around with the settings. Get a lot of cool stuff. Um, I'm going to use as a strength 0 0.3 uh, it gives a very subtle like relief to the dirt so the second part I want to add uh, are these scratches and this is actually a technique I saw from um, CG Masters they have a great tutorial on how to do this um, very detailed like scratches for rocks and stuff but I'm gonna use the technique to bring in like more subtle uh, uh, textures, but I'm gonna show you how I made these, this group uh, and how to make a group because groups are awesome. Um, so you want to bring in like uh, 
a Voronoi texture. Set this to cells. And what this is going to do is just going to bring him some cells. And it's a very common uh, texture. Also procedural. And we want to bring in a second uh, cells, but with the scale a little bit up. So once we uh, bring in like a color mix, bring in both these factors, and put it on subtract, we can actually bring out these edges, which is really nice. So uh, yeah, we want to have that. Um, but to improvise, uh, well, to improve our uh, workflow a little, we're going to bring an input uh, value. I'm going to copy this value here, bring it in here, and then bring it also in here. And our edges disappear, but we want to have a converter, MOF, bring the multiply, and multiply this by 1.01, or maybe 1.001. And then you have scratches. So, uh, the way we're going to combine this with uh, more different sized scratches and improve our workflow is we're going to select these four uh, things and press Ctrl G. And then you made uh, a group. So, I want to get rid of uh, the second value here uh, by pressing X and bring the scale also in this value. So only have one value to change from the group. Um, so yeah, now this is the output of this group. I'm going to call this group uh, uh, scratches. Let's go that. And uh, with tab, you can go in and out of these groups. And the cool thing is about groups, you can actually, if you have another material, you can actually go to group and bring in these scratches, which is really awesome. So yeah, but we want to go back to our first. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, let's call this here scratches. On the script tip. Uh, and now we can actually, which is one value, increase the scale of our scratches, which is really awesome. Now I'm going to do uh, a very simple thing. Yeah, we can actually leave this value here and play with these around. So I want to actually copy this four times and play around with scratches. I'm not making them too small. Yes, something like this for the smallest one and then just go up uh, to bring in some randomness. Only one thing I'm missing sometimes in the procedural textures is some kind of um, seed function to change the... Uh, change how they are produced. Uh, not sure how to do this. If somebody knows, let me know. Um, well, I guess you could bring in a random vector, but I don't know if that will work. Well, then aside, I'm going to bring another mix RGB. And going to put these on add. So they'll add to the two together. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to do this one more time. And then you get like a lot of different scratches through each other. And the thing I want to do next is I bring another color ramp to actually uh, bring down the intensity of this. And go in here, uh, go to color, mix RGB, and bring in the moosegrave texture that we have over here. And bring in things over here and then uh, set this to overlay nah that's uh, a little bit too harsh we just to add okay and uh, if you pop this into the top one you can actually go and control the uh, and maybe I want to make this brighter yeah and you want to have something like this and if you then put this into the height uh, we can actually, uh, let's get rid of all of this. We can actually um, get these scratches. Well, let's bring alone in these scratches. We get these scratches. Our problem momentarily is that these are not really scratches, they're just coming out. Um, we can change it real quick by just changing the uh, color ramp stuff. Well, you don't want to bring in too much notes. So, yeah. And then you have these little scratches, little subtle scratches, which look really nice. 
And combined with the dirt uh, bump, it looks really, really cool. Uh, so if you bring all the rest of this back in, you get this very cool procedural texture, which takes a little to render, but well, you can start to see here, um, like these scratches, like these subtle things. And yeah, it looks really, really cool. And so, uh, yeah, you can add uh, other stuff like uh, bringing another glossy uh, that's just has a roughness of 0 0.01. Uh, and mix shader this right here. And actually bring in a Fresnel, or for now. Um, and you want to put, uh, yeah, so the bottom one is always the white. So you want to bring this here. This is actually to get a more reflective um, surface on like the parts where you're not facing the object, uh, which is more physically correct. And then you get like this more, uh, yeah. I want to actually maybe bring this up. A little more point one. Yeah, you get this brighter edge actually. Mm, point zero five. You don't want to bring because technically it's more reflective. But if you put the re reflectivity up, it's not you're not going to notice it. And if you put the roughness down, you're actually going to see a little bit brighter and it's going to look a little bit more realistic. So yeah, here you go. Uh, here you have like this very subtle, very cool. Um, texture. You can even make this more subtle if you bring in, uh, like, maybe you want to uh, have a little bit more of the uh, blue coming through. If you go in here, it's a little bit more subtle, uh, the dirt. So yeah, you can add other stuff like uh, I did with the example. Um, by adding a diffuse with the same normal to the uh, to the creases with the uh, awesome pointiness factor, um, yeah, and that's basically it. And uh, this is the same texture applied here. And this is maybe a little bit more bluish. I mean, you can change the settings here. So yeah, uh, I hope you uh, learned something and. Uh, um, this is <laughs> this is the fourth time uh, I'm recording this. Uh, I want to thank all of you uh, guys. Uh, the positive feedback I've been getting and the amount of feedback and the amount of views I've been getting from friends and complete strangers is really awesome. Uh, I'm going to keep this channel up. Um, well, I'm going to try to keep this channel up between all the work I'm having. Um, but yeah, it's uh, really awesome to see this kind of feedback. Uh, if you want to have like a specific tutorial if you have questions uh, ask them in the comment section ask for requests uh, I, I don't know half the time of what i should do a tutorial there are already great tutorials out there um gleb alexandrov's channel or uh, you can go to creativeshrimp.com or net i'm not sure or you can go to blender guru andrew price also has very awesome tutorials um there's also cg masters uh, and there is this google plus uh, page um, Adventures in Blender, who also share a lot of great tutorials, a lot of great tips. Um, so yeah, uh, so if you have any other requests on how to do stuff, if you have any specific requests, uh, I'm always looking for ideas uh, for new channels. Uh, but well, already thanks for the great support. Uh, subscribe to the channel uh, if you haven't already. And I hope I can bring more uh, tutorials to you. And uh, yeah, so thanks. See ya.